lovingly uh, <laughs> too much fun. You know, and there's so much more to learn. So much more to learn. And it just it evolves. And the combinations, like you say, they they all work. Mm-hmm. They all work. Yeah. It's amazing. Like he, it's endless. Mm-hmm. The combination. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was speaking to some students uh, about a week ago, and I was explaining that um, the reason why you learn a kick, you know, it, we we uh, look at things so separately, and that's on purpose. You know, you learn a kick, you learn a throw, you learn a choke, you learn a lock, you learn, and they're all separate things. And uh, the truth is, <laughs> the truth is. That you only need one technique. So when that person comes in, if I'm training, I'm training really hard to uh, strike with my fist, and I'm going to hit them maybe in the throat, right? So I'm training to strike, or I'm training to hit them in the throat. Well then, well then, and that's going to work. I'm going to step. I'm going to I'm going to step to the center. I'm going to do everything right. Koshimori, tayate, harage, and really attack with that sanki. And uh, I'm going to hit them in the throat, and that's it, right? They're going to go down. They're not going to be able to breathe. So why did I learn that strangulation, and why did I learn that joint lock, and why did I learn that throw, and why did I learn that kick? Why did I learn the sword? What was I spending time with the sword if I'm just going to hit them in the throat? What was that about? And why did I spend time with the, all these different length staffs and the chain and all the... What is that about? What that's about is once we once we begin to integrate our teachings, you're learning different pieces to the same puzzle, and your one technique may take on many forms, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to apply the understanding that you attain through each study and bring it together and make it that one technique. So the reason why you're learning to kick is so that you can punch. And the reason why you're learning to strangle is so that you know exactly where to punch. And the reason why you're learning that sword technique is so that you know the exact deflection that needs to happen so that you can enter in. You understand how to remain behind the blades because you're, tr- you're training the sword. So you know how to deflect those weapons away. You know how to evade that attack so that you can land that punch. The staff, we could explain it further. You know, that's, that staff could be representative of uh, that person's attack. And he comes in from with his arm, and that represents the staff. And you need to manipulate it as a staff so that you can get your punch off. The purpose behind the art is to not leave the pieces behind. Not to say, um, I'm hitting this guy in the throat with Shikan Ken right now, so I don't need that Kenjutsu. And I don't need to be thinking about all the things that I learned about locking, because that has nothing to do with this. That has everything to do with that. Every single lock is to take that person, take that lock to the spine to manipulate their Chushin. What's wrong with the punch? Throwing the punch is flexibility. If you understand how to lock a person to their spine, well then, you can lock them to their spine, and when you deliver that strike, you won't be delivering it to a flexible neck. You'll be delivering it to a locked spine that's exposed and will stand against his skeletal structure, will stand against your oncoming attack. And instead of being flexible enough to move, with the strike, they'll stand there and take it. <laughs> In fact, if we understand our locks, that's what they're for. One of them is for. They're for making our strikes work more efficiently, more effectively, with less effort. So, Sogo Bujutsu, that integration of every teaching to make one strong foundation, one incredibly strong.